It is perverse that taxpayers' money would support officials found guilty of committing a crime against the taxpayer. We must take state pensions from those convicted of a crime related to their government service. Anything else shows disrespect for the rule of law and for the taxpayer. Governor Andrew Cuomo at today's State of the State address calling out the idea that public officials like Dean Skelos and Sheldon Silver will be paid pensions by the state after being found guilty of a crime. Tonight we have team coverage of the State of the State, including a look at the nuts and bolts of the address itself, an analysis of Cuomo's call for better ethics and morality in state government, and reactions from other lawmakers. And to help break these elements down, we're going to send it to Greg Floyd, who was there at the Empire State Plaza for the speech. He joins us now to tell us a little bit about what's in it and what the reaction's been. Greg? Hi, Liz. We're going to talk a lot more about ethics in just a minute. First, yeah, some of the numbers from the budget. $145 billion budget. There's a $300 million tax cut for small business. There's a, hundred, there's a $15 minimum wage hike. That got a lot of applause today when the governor mentioned that. $20 billion for upstate economic development. $100 billion for economic development across the state. Big questions about how to pay for all that. 12 weeks of paid family leave. A throughway toll hike freeze. No hike for at least four years. Those are some of the numbers that were talked about when it comes to the economy. But there was much more than that today. There was also education, an increase, but not as much as education advocates wanted. And there were things like, oh, how to help the, the poor, how to undergo poverty initiatives, and also public safety. Kimberly Howard takes a look at that, poverty and public safety. She's standing by live right now outside the state capitol with that part of the story. Hi, Kimberly. Hi, Greg. Yeah, poverty and public safety, definitely huge topics. Public safety in particular tonight, and not just because of recent terrorist attacks. <laughs> the New York State Police Sergeant who captured escaped prisoner David Sweat got a standing ovation during Governor Cuomo's 2016 State of the State address. The high-profile escape this past summer left the North Country on edge and drained resources across New York. Governor Cuomo wants to beef those resources up. I propose $40 million to fund the permanent deployment of more New York State troopers and National Guard at key target areas across this state because public safety must be our priority. The governor also wants to make sure law enforcement is better equipped. I propose $4 million to provide every on-duty uniform state trooper with better weapons, body armor, and tactical helmets. They give up their all for us. They deserve our support. Cuomo also wants to invest $25 million to help people out of poverty, specifically in Albany and Troy. No child should have to worry about where his or her next meal is coming from. Another $20 billion would go to helping the homeless, the governor promising more affordable housing and safer and cleaner shelters. He's also continuing to push for a $15 an hour minimum wage, a plan that would be phased in across the state by 2021. I say lift up the poor and the working families of this state and pay a real decent wage. And near the end of his address, we saw a rare emotional Cuomo as he talked about the death of his father last year. On the day of his inauguration, he ended up pushing for paid family leave after a couple of stories about his father. He also got emotional talking about his longtime girlfriend, Sandra Lee's battle with breast cancer, and talked about how New York needs to bolster early detection and prevention. Greg, back to you. All right, thank you very much, Kimberly. Paid family leave got one of the biggest ovations of the day. Now, I've been covering state of the state addresses for many, many years. Never saw what I saw today. The governor at one point got heckled today, and not just by someone from out in the public. He actually got heckled by a member of the state assembly, a new member, Charles Barron from New York City. Take a look and a listen. The poverty is high. Okay, okay, assembly. 
So that was right near the beginning of the speech, uh, Mr. Barron claiming that the governor is not doing enough to help the poor, basically. You saw the governor handle it pretty well. He said, okay, you've had your time, you've been seen, you've been heard, let's move on. The number two man in the state assembly, Joe Morelli, actually had to basically escort Barron out of the chamber. We did talk to him afterwards. I think we're going to hear from him tonight at 11 o'clock, but he was not happy again with the governor and some of the things he was saying today and in the past as well. But again, the speech moved on. The governor got some big applause right after that happened. Ethics reform, another big topic we waited to hear about today. The governor said he will go after the pensions of corrupt, corrupt lawmakers, for instance. Last year on that stage with the governor, Sheldon Silver and Dean Skello stood side by side with the governor. Since then, they were both convicted of corruption. So ethics reform, a big, big deal. How will it happen? Can it happen? Jennifer Lukey standing by with more on that part of the story. Jen? Well, Greg, those are really good questions. Some of the things the governor talked about today, closing the LLC loophole, pulling pensions from corrupt politicians, limiting outside income, it's all been talked about before. In the past, the legislature has talked and talked about it with no real results. So what's going to change now? Well, only time will tell. Taxpayers don't trust what's going on here in Albany, and they don't trust many of the people who are doing it. The recent conviction of both Dean Skellos and Sheldon Silver hasn't helped. But today the governor called for a number of ethics reforms that, if enacted, may start to change that. Now what we have to see, though, is will there be any, um, any real oomph behind what he said? Now, the rhetoric was, was fine. But is he going to use his bully pulpit to go out and really make sure, or his political capital, to make sure that the legislature really follows through? Starting with... The big thing that we've heard from a lot of our viewers is pensions. They're, they get very angry when people convicted of a crime, of ripping off taxpayers, then walk away with a pension. Yes, and of course that will take a constitutional amendment. But before it can be put in front of voters, the legislature needs to agree. Last year, they failed to do so. What is the problem in getting that bill to the voters of New York to get that amendment that's needed? Right now, there's a conflict between the Assembly and the Senate and the governor's version. This year, I am confident we will come to some common accord. The governor also wants to limit lawmakers' outside income. For local assemblyman John McDonald, who owns a pharmacy in Cohoes, well, that's a tough pill to swallow. Regardless if there's a ban, if there's a limit, or if there's continued to be income, what I didn't hear today is, is there going to be some transparent process to really ensure that public officials, whether with income or without, are not betraying the public trust? So we will see how far these proposals get when the legislature gets started on its work. As you heard, pulling pensions from those convicted of abusing their positions within the government would take a constitutional amendment, and that would need to be voted on by all of us, the taxpayers. So even if it does happen, it's still a long ways off. Greg. And it's a big issue, Jen. So many people talking about that. They want those corrupt lawmakers to forfeit their pensions. There was a deal last year, but it fell through. Now, today I went to the top two people in the assembly, the Democratic leader and the Republican leader, and asked them about ethics reform point blank. Here's what they had to say. He talked about ethics. Your house just turned down some ethics proposals. Can you make ethics reform work this year? Well, you said we turned out ethics proposals. We have a work group that we put together, and we're going to be coming out with our recommendations. Those are recommendations from the minority, and I continue to, you know, to remind people this is a political society that the majority rules. On the campaign financing reform, if it involves taxpayer dollars for public financing, that's unacceptable. Taxpayers don't want to pay for political campaigns. In terms of outside income limits, I proposed a bill that does exactly what the governor's talking about. So there are things I support, and then there are other things that really may not work based on the details of his proposal. So you heard the Assembly Speaker Carl Hasty tell me the majority rules. The only problem is there's a different majority in the Assembly and the Senate. Democrats in the Assembly, Republicans in the Senate. Can they get together? Can these things happen? That's what we'll find out. The Assembly plans on putting forth some new proposals, as you heard there, on Wednesday. So this issue will get addressed rather quickly. Will it get resolved rather quickly? That's a different question. So Liz, that's the, the basic wrap for now from the State Capitol, from the Empire State Plaza. I'm going to send it back to you. We'll have more coming up at 6.30.